Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It is Block Wednesday. We are on block number two of Sweet Childhood Memory. So every week it is a block that has some, you can think of some sort of memory from your childhood. So this week, the block is all about your bestie. Who was your best friend? Who was your best childhood friend? I would love to hear a little bit about them. And it could be something from your early childhood, from your teenage years, maybe somebody you actually have known through all of that. For me, the one I've shared was my friend Mindy that was uh, my very early first childhood friend that I can remember. She's actually the first friend I can remember. And we lived in an apartment complex uh, and her parents, um, ended up opening a store called Mindy's, which, which was a clothing store, which I thought was so cool. And I knew her when I was probably in third, fourth, fifth grade, you know, that type of range. And we had a lot of fun. It was so fun to have like a best friend in the neighborhood. Ah, so let me show you my version of the block. Here it is. I'm using Emma by my friends, Chelsea and uh, Sherry, the mother daughters. Uh, and this fabric is just so pretty and there's so many different ways and options. So today I chose these, but let me show you the thought process, how I went through that and what I ended up with. So here's a block again. Uh, and there are f uh, three colors, basically the light, the medium and the dark, but you can switch it up a little bit. You could have two lights, which I think is what I'm going to do so that this light here will be different than the corners. That'll be a background, but you can make them all the background if you wanted, or you can make them all some other fabric, not the background fabric. Uh, I put the block one over here so I could sort of look at it because at this point in the layout, I've, I've just got it in the holder here, but in this point in the layout, uh, I haven't told you where the blocks go yet because I haven't done, I haven't done the pattern part, the writing. I've just done the diagram. I haven't written the directions yet. When I write the directions, I'll tell you where block one is, etc. But because there's sort of sashing ish between it, uh, you can, I, I'm going to just use the bundle each block sort of individually and not worry so much where they are yet because um, in another block or so I will, because you can see there's a bunch of six inches up here, but there aren't any six inch blocks down here. So color wise, I wanna be sure when I get to those, they balance some. And, and um, then of course, once I get to the bottom half, if I'm doing blocks down there, I wanna be sure that I've got some colors from up above so that you don't have just a blob of one color in a corner. But we, we're only on block two, so it's sort of like you can, you can do anything you want. So let's take a look. I decided that I wanted to use, this is the background, which is uh, my bird song background. Okay, I want to use the charcoal. I want to use one of the charcoal grays. And since I already used this one in blue for, for the block here, I decided I would go with one that is a more medium scale, which I think would work best and, and for me uh, right now. So that, that'll be the outside here, the, this dark part. But I'm going to use a different fabric for, for this dark. Uh, so I may actually use, yeah, and I'm gonna use different, so I'm gonna use more fabrics. So here's one option. So I sort of um, fold this like in a, in a triangle so I can sort of get that feel of what it looks like against there. Let's go a little closer. So that's kind of where the triangle is. And I thought, okay, well there's a little green, there's a little green. So if I use the green for this uh, nine patch in the middle, then in the center, if I didn't want to use the background, but I could, I could just go ahead and use the background for everything. But if I didn't, I could go with maybe, um, here's one, maybe one like this, which has the leaf. So it's a little bit more open, not a dense uh, pattern on it, like that would be, or there's even a stripe with a lot of the colors. So that would be another option that could go in there. And then the four corners. Okay, so what's, so let me look at something else. I thought, well, what if that same dot came in something that was peach and red, which lets me sort of bring the red in more heavily. So then I could go, I could use the red like this, red, red, everything red. And then in the middle, I could use like that print. And once again, any of these I could use, I could go with that leaf which might be nice because it's a different design. These are this actually the same design, just different colors. So 
So if I went with that open leaf, that looks really good. And here, if I didn't want this pattern, which is kind of nice though, because it's got peach and peach and peach and peach. So that peach is running through in the in a little bit. But if I wanted it a little bit more, you know, sort of solidy, not solid. This has got, it's just got a, this is sort of like open pattern. This is a little denser. Maybe that's the right word, a little denser pattern. I could go with that one and just keep the other things the same. So I actually like the red. So bringing the red in now and I'm liking the leaf a lot. So I will just switch that one out and I'm actually liking this one. So there we go. That's what I sewed up. Remember in the pattern, there's always this page that has uh, the, just the cutting. And then I have it in repeat. Here it's a side by side repeat. I think that looks so fabulous. It would give a totally different effect. Uh, you would like a secondary effect when you do this. And my block again with, let me just hold up. Oh, I got it moved over here now. Let me just hold it up. So here are the two blocks. And the layout I will do uh, sometime later this month, the pattern. You have a picture of the layout, but there's no pattern yet for it. Okay, so what else is going on? We have our challenge for today. I've got some Q&A. Uh, so let's first do, and I have the, I have the layout for our, so our sampler sew along from my book, Holiday Hoopla. So let's do that one first. Let's do the Holiday Hoopla. So here's the book. And what I have been doing in the past few years when I have a new book out is <clears throat> take different blocks from the different quilts in the books and do a sampler. And so this is my uh, latest book from Martingale, which Martingale is going out of business as a publisher. And so if you want my book and you don't have it yet, you want to go over there. The link is below and at my website today of where to get it. So here is the, the diagram of what we will do. We will take nine blocks from the book and then immediately following this, we will do the library quilt because that's the one that I would like to do together. Now, of course, all the blocks, here's Love Your Library. So we will sew this one together as soon as the sampler is done. Now there, of course, all the blocks create quilts. And like for this one, we'll just be doing the pinwheel from the snowman because the snowman is just one big giant, you know, image. So he can't go in the sampler. So you can download this today also at the link below. And if you're signed up for my emails, you'll be getting an email to the article where it has all of this. So I think it's gonna be super fun. It's nine weeks and the border. Uh, and then we'll go, so that's like 10 weeks. Then we'll just roll right into the library quilt. So fun, so fun. Now I have some, let's do the mail call. I have two mail call. Two friends sent me, uh, so they're a little bit um, belated Christmas gifts, as they said. This is Karen in Michigan. Look at that cute card. Look at this. And so she sent me this super warm and fuzzy scarf. Oh, love it, love it, love it, Karen. Thank you. It is so, so soft. Oh my goodness. Karen actually went on one of my cruises years ago. We had a good time, didn't we, Karen? <laughs> and then she, I think when I was on the road teaching, yeah, she came to one of the events I was teaching at. So this one is from Sharon in Michigan. And this one is a birthday and a happy new year and everything all rolled into one. <laughs> oh, so first, let me just show you this. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Another scarf, and this one is an infinity scarf. So it's in a loop. Look at this gorgeous shade of red. Beautiful, so beautiful. And Sharon sent me some gummies, uh, pineapple, mango, pink grapefruit, fruit, <clears throat> wild cherry, orange, all kinds of good healthy flavors. And she sent me some of these, my favorite, favorite coconut patties. Oh my goodness. In different flavors to try, some different flavors. Ah, so good. these are so good. I love coconut patties. Oh my goodness. But that brand, that is like my favorite. Mwah. Thank you, my sweets. Thank you so much. All right, we have the, let's do, let's do our challenge and then I'll do the Q&A. The challenge today is to look at patterns. Patterns, patterns, who is the patterns? <laughs> and we're gonna do printed patterns, pattern packs that you've purchased or maybe digital patterns that you have printed. So we're talking about space in our studio. So I'm not dealing with any kind of digital uh, organization with this during this month. It's all your physical products. And so one of the things is I keep 
I have three of these now. That's pretty much all I have. And rarely am I keeping one of the digital ones I print. If I printed it, it's because I'm going to make it. And uh, I do have one in here though. So I had printed a pattern that I purchased. I saw it in here. Yeah. So I purchased this one. And the designer, I think she still has an Etsy store, but she's really not designing anymore. She's kind of retired from that. And so I printed it just in case because I would like to do it someday. <laughs> but for the most part, my digital ones are not printed. And then I have other patterns. So I like this because I have three of these and this is pretty much all I need. So there's stuff like this uh, is a reproduction of, you know, pattern from a quilt in the Virginia Quilt Museum that they put out for their 20th anniversary. And I love this quilt so much. Uh, there are other, like here's one that I bought uh, with, yeah, Lollipops by Kim McLean, and she has lots and lots of heavy applique pieces, and I've always loved those lollipops. And then I also found in here, which I bought, they're cross stitch, and I bought them way before I was doing really any cross stitch, and I always love these, these girls. I just love them. And so now I'm going to cross stitch those. So these actually need to go with my cross stitch stuff, although for today, I'm leaving them in here. I'm leaving them in here because I don't really have that many cross stitch that are that size, that booklet size, they're usually all the smaller pattern pack sizes. So this happens to be the one I grabbed was all the ones that were a little bit, the you know, page size, not the folded over page size of a pattern pack. So today that's what you can do is go through your printed patterns uh, and decide, well, first of all, you know, as always decide if this is something you need to work on. If not continue on one of the other tasks, or if you're just doing the dainty task, only the few tasks this month, maybe this is one of them. Maybe you haven't looked through your patterns in a really long time and you want to go through here and see what you have. I know some of you also pull magazine patterns out and save them. Uh, so now they're considered for me this category because they're no longer a magazine where, you know, what are you going to do with that whole magazine? You've already made that decision. You pulled out the one or two patterns that you might want to do someday. So if they're not in something usable, uh, do that. Get them, get them all together so you know where they are. All right. So for some Q and A's here, uh, <laughs> we had, okay, so I had a question as to what do I do? Where is this? I brought this over. So somebody wanted to know, what do I do? A couple of people want to know, what do I do with the felt balls? Well, first of all, I have a lot of different things that I use in photography for the business. So when I take pictures to show of a block, I might use these as a, as a little accent piece in the photograph and then use it maybe for the whole sew along. I would always use the felt, um, you know, for the color and everything. That's what I use them for. You can look online for many other crafting purposes of them, but I use them for photography. Uh, so there, you're gonna find things. That's the other reason I love collecting scissors. I use them for in my photography often. Uh, um, one, one question was, a couple people wanted to know, is there a way to display the scissors um, nicely? And it's like, well, if there is, show me. Uh, I don't have a lot of wall space because of well, no wall space in here, really. I would have to take something permanent down. Uh, and the rest of my home, there is some wall space, but I'm not sure that I want to mount the scissors at this point into something. Uh, so, yeah, that's, and I don't want them open because then they would just be dust collectors. So there you go on that. What kind of pins do I use? I like flower head pins. That's what I use almost exclusively is a flower head pin when I'm working. I like the length of them. I like the holding part of them. And for the most part, they are thin enough for me. Some of you like really thin pins. I don't find that necessary. So that's what I use. Well, Bonnie wanted to know where I do my basting since my studio space is fairly small. Well, first of all, I send most big things out to be long arm, so I don't need to deal with a big quilt. So I'm dealing with smaller quilts. I will spray base using my ironing board where I just move it, move it, move it because they're not really big. I can lower my machine here on this table this table that I'm standing at, and I can have the full surface of this table to baste on. I will put cutting mats down underneath so that I don't scratch the surface if I'm pin basting. So that's what I do. Uh, Sunflower Baby wants to know, this is a funny question, does Greg, 
What does Greg think about changing my quilts out seasonally? I was just never occurred to me that he would think anything. Uh, and does he ever give you an opinion of what quilt he likes or what he doesn't like? Well, first of all, he's a very smart man, so he never tells me a quilt he doesn't like, ever. <laughs> That's, he's very smart. He has to live with me every day. This would not be a good move on his part, <laughs> and he knows that. <laughs> so, he, I mean, he doesn't mind. He doesn't do any interior decorating at all, so that's all my job here. I mean, he doesn't care if the things are changed or not. Um, and there are quilts he does like more than others, be, you know, like he has a preference. Like, well, there's quilts I put up, and he's like, I really like that one. Just like anybody does, anybody. You know, you don't love everything. Uh, and you have things that you really love more, you know, like you like things, but then you have things you love. And that's kind of where he's at. He likes the quilts, but then there's some he really loves. He really loves the design of them. Okay. And the last thing is we have the winner for the quilt. The 90,000 quilt has been emailed and her name is uh, Wendy. And Wendy said my favorite fabric of my of my fabric lines is Promise Me and that she wants that she thanks me for my morning inspiration. So she watches the videos here in the morning. So Wendy, it will be packed up and shipped out to you this week. She's already emailed me back uh, about with her address. Okay. You are going to do your block. Yes, and tell me about your best friend, your childhood best friend. And it can be any age of childhood. Hey, and if you're still best friends with them, tell us about it, you know, give them a shout out. That would be so cool. And today you will download, here we go. You'll download the um, sampler layout. This is the pattern. This is the actual pattern for doing the layout for the blocks from the book. And uh, so there you go. We're ready. And every week when we do a block, I will be, and we're starting the last day of, of January, January 31st, we start. And I will be, you know, talking about the block, showing you the quilt that day. And it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a way to use the book and just have a super amount of fun with it. So I love you. Mwah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There was another question. I forgot. Okay, several of you asked or mentioned that you thought I didn't get rid of anything out of my drawer. <laughs> silly, silly quilter. This is everything I've gotten rid of so far. This one's in, not full yet. I have this bag and this bag. So I'm two full bags of notions and working on the third one from two drawers. So I will show you the drawer stuff again after I've done another drawer. So then I'll so show you what's in there. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. We'll see. I might have to get stalled here, but I am on a roll. And, and I found out what this is for. It is to hold the seam ripper. Came, whoops. Oh my goodness, I caught it. It came with that. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.